You can be addicted to food. Any of these things, any addiction, if you will, and, and people got to understand, you can be addicted to playing games. Come on now, you can be addicted to church, okay? Anything that you're putting over God, over spending time with the Lord, because the thing is, any area that you have an issue with, be it stress, be it any kind of mental illness or whatever, some things need to come by deliverance. Some things need to come by you speaking to a counselor or someone that is skilled in the area to help you. People may look at this and be like, oh, okay, so I can do these things, but I have to just do it in moderation. No, <laughs> no. Anything that becomes addictive, you need to just cut out because you don't have the strength to do it in moderation, okay? Any of these areas, these specific areas happen. You just don't want to stay there too long. I'm a brand new creature cause the army that I'm new. Yeah, I'm new. All right, you guys, welcome back to another video on legal rights of demons. Okay. Now we are referencing from BibleKnowledge.com. Okay. Now, if you are joining us, okay, for the first time, please go get yourself caught up. Okay. But in the meantime, between time, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Okay. Now we are covering the legal rights of demons. Okay. We are about to get into the ninth area, which is addictions. Okay. But before we get into that, okay. Okay. Just to give you a synopsis or an overview of the areas that we have um, been covering. Okay, we've been um, looking at 13 specific areas um, that demons have legal rights to, you know, come in and attach themselves to you, which is direct willful sin, the occult, inheritance or generational, unforgiveness, trauma, abuse, ungodly soul ties, curses, addictions, fears, and phobias false religions, cursed objects, and cursed buildings, okay? Now, there were six specific willful areas of sin that the demons can um, have legal rights to, and that is any kind of criminal activity, doing any type of heavier drugs, abuse of alcohol, abortion, adultery, and inflicting heavy verbal or physical abuse on another person. Now, when when and if you are dealing with the occult, dabbling in it in any kind of way, there are 19 specific areas that you are allowing uh, demons legal rights. The first one is fortune telling of any kind of such as palm reading, crystal ball gazing, neurology, or seeing psychics, um, tarot cards, Ouija boards, and automatic writing, seances, and any involvement with mediums or or spiritists astrology any form of horoscopes i ching which is which is your yin and yang um hypnotism transcendental meditation or any type of far eastern meditation crystals witchcraft satanism voodoo hoodoo channeling reincarnation astral projection okay esp which is your sixth sense okay um dungeons and dragons role-playing games new age movement techniques and activities and lastly numerology okay now when dealing with trauma it was five particular areas or situations that the that the demons will exploit and you know uh, uh, wedge your little ways up into your life okay now these areas is a sudden loss of your job having to go through a painful and messy divorce the sudden death of a very close loved one like a spouse or a child okay a major type of illness a major car accident where you are seriously injured and that can cause like little cracks in the crevice to allow um, these demonic entities to come in um, because they know that you are you are, you know, down for whatever reason or for whatever uh, cause, right? Okay, and so the last video that we delve in, we uh, covered curses, and there was three specific areas in which that you can um, allow legal right for demons to enter, and it was direct curses, self cursing, and then lastly, general curses. Okay. Now, with all of that, if you have not, please, please go catch up and watch all the episodes from one 
okay from legal right one all the way to legal right eight okay you are now entering on legal right nine which we're about to get into which is addictions okay oh my goodness we are almost there we have what four more four more areas that we have to cover before this particular teaching is complete and i hope it's blessing you okay so this next legal right is also a major feeding ground for demons okay and i believe it's just running rampant in the times that we're in now okay you can break addictions down into two different types those that are behavioral based and those that are chemically based but whether an addiction is chemically based or behavior based, once again, demons will waste no time in moving in to try and make matters even worse. Here are some of these specific addictions that demons will try to move in on if a person or yourself does not try and pull out um, if, if in within a reasonable amount of time. Okay. Now, do not get this misconstrued on the last video i was talking about you know the abuse of alcohol and how it's not really a sin to drink it's a sin to abuse it it's a sin to get drunk right and so people may look at this and be like oh, okay so i can do these things but i have to just do it in moderation no <laughs> no anything that becomes addictive um, you need to just cut out because you don't have the strength to do it in moderation. Okay, but let's let's get into these areas. The first area is alcohol. The second area is cocaine. The third is heroin. The fourth is meth. Fifth is marijuana. The sixth is LSD. The seventh is anti-prescription drugs. Eight, anorexia nine bulimia and lastly gluttony okay we're not going to dab deep in all these areas but you can see how a lot of these areas can be addictive right and the thing is is, is that that's why I've, I've told people this before you can be addicted to food okay any of these things okay any addiction if you will and and people got to understand you can be addicted to playing games Come on now, you can be addicted to church, okay? Anything that you're putting over God, over spending time with the Lord, because the thing is any area that you have an issue with, be it stress, be it any kind of mental illness or whatever, some things need to come by deliverance. Some things need to come by you speaking to a counselor or someone that is skilled in the area to help you, right? Just like eating too much, like, I, like, like the last one, gluttony. You know, you rely on food to calm you. Now, to be set free from both the demons and the addictions that are on you, you have to be willing to take the following three steps. Here we go. Now, you have to confess out the addiction as a sin before the Lord and ask him to fully forgive you and wash away the stain of this sin from your soul and body. Two, ask God by the power of the Holy Spirit to take out this addiction from your personality and lifestyle if you do not have enough willpower on your own to pull out of it, okay? You will need an inner healing from the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, lastly, once you have fully surrendered your addictions over to the Lord uh, for his full and complete handling, then engage with the with the demons tell them that they no longer have any more legal right to stay to stay attached um, to you since you will be under god's direct authority and power from this point on and that and you will now be working closely closely with the holy spirit to remove this addiction and stronghold from your life now if you feel like you're really bound up and you don't think that you can break free from your addictive lifestyle look in the word and see that there is nothing that God cannot do, including being able to set you fully free from whatever you are addicted to. Now I have to explain to you that as a Christian, you already have the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of you. 
okay along with his full divine power to be able to set yourself fully free from both your specific addictions and the demons who are attached to them now we're going to go ahead and move into fears and phobias okay with the mind being the actual battlefield in the area of spiritual warfare demons will always look for any sign of abnormal mental weakness and this is where you get into some of the different types of abnormal fears and phobias that people can develop these types of fears and phobias are all irrational the normal person will not have these types of irrational fears operating on them examples of these types of irrational fears are the following being too afraid to drive again if they have been involved in a car accident two women being too afraid of men if they have been sexually abused in their past this type of unhealthy fear will also prevent them from being from ever being able to have a normal healthy relationship with another man thirdly fear of failure if they have always been told by their parents and friends that they will never amount to anything this type of irrational and unhealthy fear can also keep them from being able to reach what god has called them to do for him in this life now initially all of these type of irrational fears are totally understandable at the outs at the outset if they have come into a person's life as a result of some kind of abuse or trauma but where people can get into trouble in these realm in this realm is if they wallow too long in these type of unhealthy fears now what i've gathered from just doing all this research and listening and reading these articles and 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 in this research is is that it's when you don't get up right and people often use the excuse of like i'm not perfect and god knows i'm not perfect and this and the third as a rational way of um thinking in in the terms of i'm gonna continue to do this because i'm not perfect and we all fall short but the thing is, is is that the difference between living in sin and just having a sinful uh kind of uh way i mean we we all do fall short but we fall you don't stay there you fall when you get back up and you move forward right so what i've noticed is that in the event of any of these things happening to you okay any of these areas these specific areas happen you just don't want to stay there too long you know you you go through it and you get up you know you move forward right now if they do not get a proper grip on this type of unhealthy fear this fear can then take over their entire life where they will no longer be able to function in certain areas of their lives as a result of their fear always hounding and following them and from there demons can then move in to intensify the fears they are already feeling if a woman has been sexually abused by her father during part of her growing years in the household then she could have a very hard time in being able to trust any man when she gets out on her own and she will always think and feel that every man that she will ever meet will be just like her father if she does not pull out of this type of irrational fear within a reasonable period of time that fear could then cripple and paralyze her and prevent her from ever being able to marry anyone thus causing her to miss out on a real big blessing that god would have wanted her to have in this life and this was all and this was all as a direct result of an abnormal and irrational type of fear totally control and dictating her life demons know that these types of irrational fears and phobias can totally shut someone down in the lord so again they will waste no time in moving in to try and make matters even worse for the person once spirits of fear and paranoia attached to this type this kind of person 
they will then become even more bound up than what they already were. And before you know it, they won't trust anyone in their life. Now to help set this type of person free from both their fears and the demons who are attached to them, they will need to take the following two steps. Let's go. Step one, confess out, confess out your fears to the Lord. Ask him to take complete control of your thought life and emotional life and ask him by the power of the Holy Spirit to do inner surgery on you. So you can then straighten out your thoughts and your emotions and heal up. Uh, so your irrational fears do not continue to roll over you and destroy you and your life. You would then have to make a full and complete surrender of your body, your soul, and your spirit, and your entire life to the Lord so that he will be fully free to start the inner healing process with, with you. Lastly, once you have fully surrendered, second, once you have fully surrendered to the Lord along with a request for his direct um, help in getting you cleaned up and healed from your uh, irrational fear, then directly engage with the demons, telling them that they have no, they telling them that they no longer have any more legal right to stay attached to you. And now that they have turned the reins and now that you have turned the reins over to the Lord, um, along with asking for his direct help in taking out these types of abnormal and irrational fears that have been operating in your life too long of a period. Now, after this kind of heartfelt prayer is made to the Lord, then the Holy Spirit will start to move to take out these kind of irrational fears and phobias that you may have developed over years from any kind of dysfunctional activity or traumatic events that you may have experienced, okay? Now we're gonna stop here and when we come back, we're gonna get into false religions, okay? False religions, okay? Um, but I pray that this, these particular, this particular teaching is blessing you. And I pray that you were able to get some kind of help um, by way of going through these teachings, okay? <laughs> now the word of god says if you resist the enemy he will flee okay um and we we see examples of that he tried to tempt jesus with all these things baby and and he used the word of god to try to use it against the lord but when you study to show thyself approved when you get your word and you know how to use it back on the enemy he he fleed from from Jesus. He he ran off. Okay, he's like, dang, I can't I can't get him. Right? God bless you. Hey, Whitney D here. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you click the subscribe button if you have not done so already. And make sure you click that notification bell, moving for personalized all, so you can receive all the updates that I place here on the channel. You can get all the notifications. Okay. And make sure you connect with me on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram. Well, all right, you guys. I love you, but most of all, God loves you. Until next time. I'm a brand new creature cause the only that I'm new, yeah, I'm new.